Hello, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to show you a game by the name of Zularetto Jr. And this is a tile drafting game in which players are going to be collecting sets of animal tiles and zoo park feature tiles in hopes of building the best zoo. That will score them points. The person with the most points at the end of the game is going to win. Uh, this is a junior version of a big box game by the name of Zularetto, which is a spin-off game of a, col of a card game by the name of Coloretto. All of these were designed by uh, German game designer Michael Schacht. Um, I'll take a moment to show you the rules of it, and I'll come back and give you my thoughts on it. Okay, so this is what a uh, three-player setup of Zuloretto Jr. might look like. There's going to be a truck, each which holds three cargo spaces for each player, and the game plays up to five. Um, each player will also get one of these barns, which will have on it spaces for three animals, a barn, and then also a scoring track which will tell you how many points you'll get at the end of the game for collecting sets of animals. So, the game itself is actually quite simple. Oh, so there's these uh, set of animal tiles, and you're going to set 15 aside under a marker for the end game. And then there's also baby animal tiles, I'll explain those in a minute. And all the player will do on their turn is draw one tile and place it onto one of the cars. So, for example, this player draw a giraffe, and they might put it there. Then, the next player would go, and they have the option to either take one of the trucks, if they haven't yet taken a truck, once you take a truck you'll be out of the round, or to draw another tile and add to one of the trucks. So here they got a deer, they might just put it on this truck. Next player would go, the third player, may put an ostrich here. Somebody might, you know, put a meerkat here. So there are all these cute little animals on here. Somebody else might say, I'll put another ostrich here. And then at that point, a player might say, I want two ostriches, they'll take those, and they get to add them to their, to their zoo. So your zoo is divided into three spaces. You could just, each space could hold up to six tiles, whether animal tiles or zoo feature tiles. And any, an, or any, any space could only hold one type of animal. So now I've put ostriches here, I cannot put a meerkat here. If ever you cannot fit an animal or any tile into one of your three paddocks then you have to place it into your barn and that's generally what, something you want to avoid so this would go out then the other two players would continue to either draw tiles or to claim these uh, trucks and then if there's one player left they could just continue to draw until they choose to stop and then they would be forced to take the uh, tiles and add them to their zoo I should mention that this is not an animal tile, this is a feature tile. This one is, I guess, a fountain. There are other various types of feature tiles, and those could be added into any paddock along with animals, and they will be two points each at the end of the game per type that you've collected. And if you can't place them into one of your paddocks, they would also go to your barn and potentially be negative points at the end of the game. So once every player has claimed a truck, then you're going to start a new round. And the person who claimed the last truck just begins again and draws a tile. Next player goes, and so on. So, let me just see if I can get lucky here in my demonstration. Okay, so let me just, for a moment, say that this tile is here instead. If the player claims these tiles, so if ever you claim, you'll notice some of them, and only two per type, have male and female signals, symbols on them rather. If ever you add a male and a female animal to a section of your zoo that are of the same type, they will produce a baby. So they're over here, little baby tiles. So these two bulls would produce a baby wolf, provided that there is additional space still in that zone. And then you could just immediately place a baby tile in that zoo, and that'll help you get points at the end of the game. If this was already filled up, you would not be able to put the baby tile into your barn. And if ever you fill up an area, whether with animal tiles or features, you immediately get, or at the end of your turn, you get a free action, which would simply to be Either you can discard a tile that you were not able to place off of your barn, or you could take 
a, a tile that face that's a uh, face up on another player's barn and added to your zoo, and the other player would not be able to block that. So the game will just keep going like this until all of those tiles that you've uh, started the game with are run out, and then you'll just finish out the round using these last 15 tiles, and after that you will score your zoos. So the way that the scoring is going to work is that you're going to look at the number of animals in each part of your zoo. So let's say I had also a deer here and another deer, and then I had to take a meerkat over here. And let's say I have this rock here as well. All right, so here's a scoring example, and let me see if I could zoom in on that. So the way that you're going to score is you're going to look at how many animals are on that section. So here we have five animals, and you see that's worth eight points. Here we have two animals, that's worth two points, two animals, two points. So that'd be eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve for the animals. Then you look at any animals that are in your barn. Each type of animal that you have in there is going to be minus two points. So even if you have multiple animals of the same type, it's each type. So this would be minus two. And then you're going to look at every type of feature that you have and I have one, two types, so that'd be four points. Again, I have two rocks. I only could score each feature type once. And if you had any features in your barn, those would also be minus two per type. After you've done that, the person with the most points will be the winner. Okay, so that is Zuloretto Jr. And this is a spinoff of a terrific card game by the name of Coloretto, which it has, shares the same designer. And Michael Schacht, the uh, designer of the game, he generally makes games that have mechanics almost stripped down to the core. That, you know, so he has some trading games that have only a few possible moves that you could make during a turn. And this you know, is a, a basically a zoo building game where really you know, you're reducing it down to just selecting tiles, adding them to your zoo, and that's about it. So usually I appreciate that kind of um, stripped down you know, simplicity, straightforward simplicity in a game. Um, this might take it too far for me personally. Um, you know, this is a very cute game. It has like, all those cute little baby animal tiles, which were also in uh, Zuloretto, the game that this is the junior version of. And this has to, I think, definitely be judged as a junior version of that game. Um, at the core of this game is a very, you know, very simple, streamlined system of choosing those tiles where you're going to either draw a tile and add it to a truck or pick a truck each turn and that you know always creates interesting decisions because you're potentially setting up your opponents if you add a tile it'll be the whole round until it gets back to you potentially um, before you could grab that tile that you would just add it if you want it so that's really interesting at its core but that core has been used in the game Coloretto, in the game Aquaretto in the Zuloretto dice game and in Zuloretto itself and I think that this is probably my least favorite of those games in the series and basically because it's you know less less complex than Zuloretto in the full version of Zuloretto there are money actions you get cash that you could use to either upgrade your zoo or to move animals around here that's you know largely cut out of the game and in Coloretto even though that's just a card game that does have these cards that give you plus two points regardless of suit it does have the option to collect more than three types of of uh, of animals, I guess you know. Although they're there, they're all lizards, and it also has wild cards. So that also has some interesting decisions that don't exist in this version as well. So this is clearly, you know, a a kids game. You know, the the one thing that you're considering, I guess, is just the fact that you only have six spaces per section of your zoo, um, which I guess is interesting um, to a degree. But you know, it really is a kids game. Um, I think that I've played this with two players, and I think that in a two-player game, it does vary somewhat. Um, instead of each truck having three spots, in a two-player game, you play with three trucks, but they have one, two, and three um, spots for animal tiles. So that changes the game somewhat. You could only claim one of those still, but one of those trucks will go unclaimed each round. But in two players, it's extremely easy to avoid taking negative points unless you really get hosed by the... Uh, the luck of the draw. In a more player game, like a 3, 4, 5 player game, it does become a little bit harder because there's more types of animal tiles in the game. Um, but in a two player game, I almost wouldn't suggest playing this. I would suggest either playing another version of 
this uh, system or just waiting until you have more players. But in a two-player game, yeah, you can almost entirely avoid taking negative points. You know, I will say, though, that all of my personal complaints about this aside, it's pretty decent as a kid's game. It is a kid's game. It's called Zuloretto Jr. I think if you had children, it'd be fine playing this with them. At the same time, though, I am a little bit skeptical that kids would be able to handle this, but not um, Coloretto or uh, base game Zuloretto. Um, I looked at this. It has ages 7 and up written on it. The uh, Zuloretto itself has 8 and, eight and up on it. Uh, Coloretto has 8 and up on it. Aquaretto is a little bit more compli complicated. That's 10 and up. So I think it's a really small market for this game if you know you have children at that age or you really just you know want a very light set collection game. This might be fine for you. I'd like the base of the system in this game, but for most people I think I would recommend that they either get the Aquaretto, Coloretto, or Zuloretto over Zuloretto Jr. So I would just say that, you know, those are my personal thoughts on it. Um, I think it's fine, it's well designed for what it is, but it's not personally a game for me. So, thanks for watching, that is Zuloretto Jr.